Welcome to episode 13b of our enlightening series on creationism versus evolution. Continuing directly from episode 13a, where we delved into the intricate issue of order within evolutionary theory, this episode promises to further unravel the complex web of arguments and counter-arguments surrounding the origins of life and the universe's finely tuned design. As we navigate through the realms of philosophy, science and theology, we invite our viewers to join us in exploring alternative perspectives on the emergence of order and the challenges they pose to conventional evolutionary explanations. Stay tuned as we seek to illuminate the depths of this ongoing debate, offering insights and sparking curiosity about the mysteries of our existence. Modern physics has brought amazing discoveries, much more surprising than Paley's watch analogy. It has been revealed that the existence of life in the universe depends on many parameters of the basic behavior in the cosmos, and these parameters are precisely tuned, proving design. These findings are called the Anthropic Principle. The Anthropic Principle shows how our existence in the universe is conditioned on the miraculous precision of parameters. The fact that Earth is at just the right distance from the Sun to allow for the existence of life not too close and not too far, has amazed scientists, and they call this peculiar state Goldilocks climate problem. The vast spaces between stars dilute the intensity of cosmic radiation to such an extent that allows us to live. If not, we would all be cooked or at best lose our fertility unless the great distance created safe zones in space, no biological system could exist. If the weak nuclear force were slightly less than its current strength, even by a few percent, the proton would not be able to bind to the neutron to create the deuteron. In such a case, there would be no neutrons in the sun, and without fuel, the thermonuclear reaction would not occur, and thus the sun would stop shining once its ignition energy ran out. If the nuclear force were stronger, even by a few percent, the proton would be able to bind to another proton. In such a case, all protons in the sun would bind together, causing a massive explosion, similar to igniting an explosive. Here too, the sun would stop shining since there would be no fuel left after the explosion. Life as we know it would not be possible if any of several physical quantities had slightly different values. It seems that one constant had to be fine-tuned to an unimaginable degree. The truly amazing thing is not that life on Earth is balanced on a knife edge, but that the entire universe is balanced on a knife edge and would be rendered utterly void if any of the fundamental constants were even slightly different. The universe appears to be engineered in an unbelievably precise way for the emergence of life and seems to have been designed in such a way. The simplest interpretation of the observations, according to common sense and unbiased, points to an entity responsible for tuning the laws of physics, chemistry and biology, and there are no barren laws at all in nature. I do not believe that a physicist examining the facts can avoid concluding that the laws of nuclear physics have been precisely designed with the results they produce in stars. Fred Hoyle from the program mentioned above. If the energy of the Big Bang had been different from what it actually was by one part in, 0.100 here comes the number one followed by 119 zeros. There would be no life anywhere in our universe. From its inception, the universe was fine-tuned for life. The expansion was supposed to cancel out matter. The question arises, as written in Scientific American in 1993, how did so much matter manage to remain? Why is there something instead of nothing? There should not have been any matter left. According to the theory, the universe today should have been devoid of matter and only contain a faint glow of radiation so weak that it could not even compete with the energy of a single microwave in an oven. Due to some exotic reason still unknown to us, the amount of matter created was greater than the amount of antimatter, and we are talking about an infinitely small amount of matter. We and the entire material universe serve as evidence to this tiny imbalance. The explosion of stars somewhere in space is just one of many different events, all of which were vital to human existence and well-being. And all indeed occurred, many scientists were required for this phenomenon of many coincidences, all of which are for the benefit of humans, especially noted by Professor Freeman Dyson from Princeton University, and he expresses his awe in these words. When we look at the universe and notice the number of astronomical events that by chance produce exactly the desired result for man, 
we are filled with the feeling that in some sense the universe knew in advance about our arrival. If water under ice were not denser than it, the anomaly of water. Life underwater would not be possible. The high specific heat of water allows it to store enough heat energy to maintain the stability of chemical reactions in the body. The ozone layer protects us from radiation. The moon affects the tides, but if it were closer, it would cause tides that would flood the entire Earth. If physical constants such as the electron charge, Planck's constant, and the constants of the weak and strong forces were slightly different from those known today, carbon formation in stars would not be possible, Fred Hoyle, Alvin Toffler. And to summarize briefly, life here would not be possible without the current existing constants, one. The precise distance of the Earth from the Sun, two. The vast spaces between stars, three. The precision of the weak nuclear force, four. The exact amount of energy in the Big Bang, five. The constants of quantum physics, the ratio between matter and antimatter, six the density of mass energy in the universe in relation to the strong nuclear force. The combination of all these and similar data reaches incomprehensible numbers such as 10120. All this just for the possibility of life, not for its creation of course.